What's up family, it is Caden with Urban Finance, and today we're going to be doing a review of The Miseducation of the Negro by Carter G. Woodson. If you haven't already, please hit the like button and subscribe to our page. Just a little disclaimer, especially in our culture that is pretty PC right now, this content could be considered very provocative. So if you have sensitive ears, I would recommend that you turn back now. Okay, let's jump into it. According to Carter G. Woodson, while some people may try to point to rising education statistics to show advancement in the black community, there's only one question which concerns us. Are these educated persons actually equipped to face the ordeals before them? Or do they unconsciously contribute to their own undoing by perpetuating the regime of the oppressor? Highly educated Negroes denounce persons who advocate for the Negro a sort of education different in some respects from that now given to the white man. They are anxious to have everything that white people have, even if it is hurtful. The so-called modern education, with all its defects, however, does others so much more good than it does the Negro, because it has been worked out in conformity to the needs of those who have enslaved and oppressed weaker people. For example, the philosophy and ethics resulting from our education system have justified slavery, segregation, and lynching. No systemic effort towards change has been possible because we are thought the same economics, history, philosophy, literature, and religion which has established the present code of morals the Negro mind has been brought under the control of his impressor. The problem of holding the Negro down, therefore, is easily solved. When you control a man's thinking, you do not have to worry about his actions. You do not have to tell him to stand here or go yonder. He will find his proper place and he will stay there. You do not need to send him to the back door. He will go without being told. In fact, if there is no back door, he will cut one for his special benefit. His education makes it necessary. If our education system isn't allowing our people to thrive in society, then we must come to the conclusion that it is a failure. There isn't one strategy that will fix our system, but we must be open to trying different forms of education because the current one is not working. The educated Negro have the attitude of contentment towards their own people because in their own schools and in their mixed schools, Negroes are thought to admire the Hebrew, the Greek, the Latin, and to despise the African. In most of the Negro colleges and universities where Negroes are thought, the race is studied only as a problem or dismissed as of little consequences. In a Negro summer school, a white instructor gave a course on Negroes, using for his textbook a work which teaches that whites are superior to blacks. When asked by one of the students why he used such a textbook, the instructor replied that he wanted them to get that point of view. The thought of inferiority of the Negro is drilled into him in almost every class he enters and in almost every book he studies. To handicap a student by teaching him that his black face is a curse and that his struggle to change his condition is hopeless is the worst sort of lynching. It kills one aspiration and dooms him to vagabondage and crime. It is strange then that the friends of truth, those that promote freedom, have not risen up against the present propaganda in the schools and crushed it. Even our most widely known scholars have been trained in universities outside of the South. Northern universities and Western institutions, however, have no time to deal with matters which concerns black people. They must focus on the majority of their constituents, and too often they have stimulated their prejudice by referring to the Negro as unworthy of consideration. In schools of business administration, Negroes are trained exclusively in the psychology and economics of Wall Street and are therefore made to despise the opportunities to run ice wagons, push banana carts, and sell peanuts amongst their people. Foreigners who have not studied economics but who have studied Negroes take up these businesses and grow rich. Regardless of the type of study that the Negro takes up, 
it's usually something that he can bring back and use within his community. Trained to live paycheck to paycheck. Black people were given freedom from bondage, but remain in economic slavery. The school systems that were formed by those that held them in bondage were not supposed to help promote the race. At most, they were to be paid laborers for their former masters. While industrial education was a good idea in theory, many Negroes attended industrial schools, took training, received their diplomas, but few of them developed adequate efficiency to be able to do what they were supposedly trained to do. The schools for liberal arts education didn't do us much better either. The greatest indictment of the so-called educated Negro is their inability to make a living. What Negroes are now being taught does not bring their minds into harmony with a life as they most know it. When a Negro student works his way through college by polishing shoes, he does not think of making a special study of the science underlying the production and distribution of leather and its products that he may someday work or build in this sphere. The Negro boy sent to college by a mechanic seldom dream of learning mechanical engineering to build upon the foundation of his father that in years to come he may figure as a contractor or consulting engineer. The Negro girl who goes to college hardly wants to return to her mother if she's a washerwoman, but this girl should come back with sufficient knowledge of physics and chemistry and business administration to use alongside her mother to develop a modern steam laundry that will produce wealth for herself and her community. We have many examples of foreigners and white people who have gotten rich by developing on things that their community did. But the problem is not necessarily the type of education that we receive, whether it's a trade education or a liberal arts education or education in science. The problem for the Negro is that regardless of the education he received, he never fully thinks through how is he gonna make a living through that education. And that needs to be the focus. We need to focus on things that would allow us to earn an income from the education we receive. And if we do not see a path to earning a living wage from a specific form and type of education, then it's not an education that we should be pursuing. Okay, family, thank you for watching. This was a review, a very brief review of The Miseducation of the Negro by Carter G. Woodson. Happy Black History Month, and please support this channel by hitting the like button and subscribing to the page. As I always say, love you and live your best life.